In this video, I'm playing a five-point match against XG and analyzing it. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoy this video. Please like and subscribe, and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. How would you have played the move? Uh, so, And let me know what you'd like to see in future videos so I can work on that. I appreciate your super thanks. These small donations help me continue to create the high-quality content that you enjoy. We now have membership options for a small monthly fee. You'll have exclusive access to the most popular videos. My book, Backgame and Backgame Strategies, is available. There's a link in the description to where you can get it. And if you're interested in lessons, please contact me via email. My email address is also in the description. I'm playing on a beautiful Hector Sachs board. This is a Slade and Magnolia board. The XG board is made by Rain. He makes some beautiful XG boards. There's a link in the description to where you can get them. I'm playing the orange checkers at the bottom, XG, the turquoise blue checkers at the top. And here we go with the 6-5 standard lover's leap running the back checker. 5-3 makes the point. 4-1. I'm able to come down and I can come up or I can advance. This does make it harder, but it also freezes the eight points. So uh, if he makes a three, it makes the point with a three, one or a four, two, it leaves a direct shot. Okay, four, two, like there. So now I couldn't make that point. Now the three, two, don't know that I want to hit with one checker back against the two point board versus two checkers back. Don't necessarily want to start a hitting exchange with this. I think I just play safe and advance. Okay. So notice the four is there. We're duplicated to anchor. Five, three comes in and hits. Good roll. Double one can hit back. Double three dances. Four, three anchors and brings one down. Okay. So two, one. I think I come in and play behind. Three, one hits and continues. Six, four dances. Now I'm just in bad shape. I have no development. One on the bar, three-point board, two checkers back versus three checkers back, but I have to pass this one. All right. Now two, one, six, four is the perfect medicine for that. Double one, one, two, three, four. All right. Not quite a double yet. Four, one. I'm going to go to the nine point. All right. Makes the bar point. Six, four. Guess I'll just make this point here. Six, two hits. 5-3 comes down, comes in and brings one down to the 8.62 runs. Now with the 6-4. Not so good. What are the options? I can play like this. It goes kind of deep. I can play like this. It's not so good. I can play like this. I think there aren't many good options, but this may be the best. Doubling. Because the score, it's a pretty comfortable take. 5-1. At four-way, five-way, you want to double aggressively to try to win the match with a double gammon. 6-1. Or I can go out, but I think I need to hit here. Double three. Okay, so one, two, and I'm going to make the board and unstack there. 4-1, I was hit back. Six three okay, so now I need to start moving things. Okay, so I think I just bring these two so I can escape with fives and sixes. If it's a six, I'm able to escape. It's a five. I still retain that anchor. Double three. So one two. Okay, one I can clear. And that's fine. Five one. I'm gonna unstack here. Double three, so can't move there. One, two, three, four. Okay. I'm just hoping not to get gammoned for the match here. Five, and then four, I can make the point. Double three again, it's completely forced. Four, three, cannot move. Double one, one, two, three, and four. Okay. Cleared, three, two is forced. Two, one is forced. Five, four, I'll bring two out. Four, two. Six, two. Okay, there's the shot. Five, two hits. Probably not going to win, but this might help me save the gammon. Do 
I just want to play safe to try to save some more gammons, okay? 6-1. 3 2. Might get a shot here. No. 1, 2, 3, 4. That will likely save the gammon. Okay. All right. So 5 away, 3 away. I'm going to play aggressive. 5 4 hits back. 5 1. I'm going to come in with the 5. And I can slot there. 4 3. It's twice, double four, one, two. Wow. Three, four. Double one's a great return. Two, six from the bar. So that's the two. And I think I split here. Hits with the four, continues with the five. Six, one, makes the 18 point anchor. Double five. Double four. Don't want to break the midpoint. I don't want to break the 18 point. I can make two interboard points. Despite the fact that I only have seven checkers in the zone, this does make a three point board. Five three cannot move from the back. Double two. So bring that up. Two, three, and four. Six five is going to run. Five three. I can make use of that spare checker. Five one. I'm going to slot. All right, 6-1. I'm going to slot the next point. 4-3. I'll bring two down. Two. And then if I play four to three, now I have two covers for the four point. Double two, one, two, three, and four. Just trying to stay back, maintain some contact. Not good, but... If I play over here, I'm going to have to compromise my front structure. I think I'm going to have to do this. 6-4 is a good number. 4-1 comes in. Now I don't think I can take this. All right. So now it's 5 away, 1 away Crawford. 6-4, I'm going to run the second checker. 5-4 is a good roll. I'm able to make the 9 point. 5-4 again, bring two more down. Okay, 3-1, I'm going to make the point. Gammons are not particularly valuable at this score. Probably should have brought this one up. My head in the race, just trying to break contact. So I think I play there so I don't leave a stack on the three point. Now I'll we'll analyze it. So in the first game with the six five, it was just clear to run with the six five and then the four one okay so this this was the one uh that i was looking at just bringing it up all the way and this was the right play resulting in this position so because i have only a single checker back um it's better to just play safe what happens after this um some of my roles don't play as good so we'll look at it so this is the top play and this is the second play. After the top play here, because I have four checkers here and five checkers here, doubles play really nicely, like double ones, double threes, uh, and double fours. I also have rolls like six, five, and six, one. Um, although here I have other good rolls like uh, four, one, and five, two that help. So this is the dice distribution. Um, the, this is the, what it looks like after the top play, and this is after the second play. So um, after the top play, this is the dice distribution. This is how all the opponent's rolls play, uh, starting with double one, two, one, three, one, and so forth, all 36 of them, and the average on the right, and here um, it's on the left. So, and then the lower, the lower left shows the difference. So you see there are some really bad numbers, and these are all the eights, the six, two, five, three, double four. Uh, uh, those are bad. All these doublets are bad either way, except for double five. 
but you see the difference uh, with the six two five three um, as well as six four and double four play really bad. So after this play, I get hit with six two uh, five three double four is really bad. It hits twice and six four points on head. Whereas that's not the case here. Um, so those are the big swings. Additionally, uh, looking at my next rolls. Here we go. So, again, double three and six five and six one are the big ones, along with three one. So, after this, double threes are good, six five, six one are good. Uh, whereas after this, the four one, five two, four three, uh, uh, five four um, make these points. So, that was that play. There is a variant uh, I looked at, which is here where now it's uh, barely correct to slot. They turn out to be tied. This is when there's the 6-4, and you cannot move this, and you only and you have two checkers back. In the original position, there's only one checker back. One of the things I learned from uh, Bill Roberti's recent series on how to play the opening and backgammon is once you have escaped one checker, uh, there's a major focus on escaping the second checker and trying to avoid leaving blots uh, that will send the second checker back. Uh, because your major liabilities in the opening position are the back checkers. So you want to get them out and you want to prevent your opponent from getting them out. Once you have one out, you want to get the second one out and avoid getting a, another one sent back. So that was that one. Then 3-2. Okay, look, it was it was actually close to hit loose. Okay, so this is going to win more gammons, fewer games. Um, it's going to lose a little bit more gammons, but it's going to win more gammons than uh, gammon losses. So it's a little bit better. 5-3 was a good roll, and it was clear. Double 3, I couldn't move. 2-1, I had to play behind. And 6-4, I couldn't move. And this was a double, and this was a pass. So what could I have done to make it a take? It was a big pass, so it's going to take a lot. Let's say there was this like this. Now, okay, so now it's barely a double. So this is a really good exercise to do to see what aspects of the position make it a take. So this was the original position, okay? Uh, the other thing you could do is change the score, but let's change the position first. So let's say it's like this. That will make it closer, but it's still a pass. Um, okay, so what about moving one back here? Does that make a difference? Makes it closer, but it's still a pass. What if I'm ahead in the race a little bit more here by doing that? Nope. What if I have an extra point here and gain a little bit in the race? Now it's a borderline take. So I have to improve my position by a lot. Um, what if this were the five point? Now that's probably tips the scale. When you have the five point versus the three point, it's much stronger. So let's go back to the original position and change the score. So let's say it's a three away, four away. So now you're the leader doubling. It's probably closer, but it becomes too good to double because you're trying to get to the... Uh, one away score the Crawford game. What if it's a four away, five away? Again, a four way, five away, you want to try to go for gammons to get to the valuable two way score. You see, this is too good to double. And let's see, four away, four away, same, same idea. You want to get to two away. So, what if it's five away, four away? Now it's a pass. Okay, so those are the things that I like to do. These are the like the most educational things. Change the position and see what happens. That's where you learn a lot. Um, all right, on to game two. The 6-4 was perfect. Then the 4-1 uh, just brought it down, and 6-4 makes the point. 5-3 comes in and down. And this was the 6-4. This was the one that I was thinking about. So the six, I came out, and it's just, you know, when you have a position where all the options are really bad, uh, 
think you have to think a little bit more. I guess this one results in this position and leaves two blots. You can hit, be hit with fours here and threes here, whereas this only leaves one blot. So that's the key there. Yeah. Uh, and then this was a double, I think, only because of the score. So let's look at this. So let's say it was zero, zero, five away, five away. This is this is not a double, and it's only uh, worth 637 million points. Here now it's worth 748. The reason is, is because there's a lot more gammons, 19% to 10%, and those double gammons are really good. So if you go to cube information and look at the gammon value on a two cube for the four-way player, it's 814. That's really high because it, a gammon on a two cube at four way wins the match perfectly. It's not quite as high for the trailer because a double gammon at five way gets you to one away only. It will be the crop for the game, but you don't win the match outright. So think about those things. When the gamm gammon value is high on the two cube or whatever it is, you want to think about those things. This is how you decide to adjust in terms of match play. You don't necessarily have to memorize the gammon value. All you have to know is if blue wins a gammon on a two cube, blue wins the match perfectly with perfect efficiency. So going from one to five, going from four away to exactly zero away. It's not getting any overage. It's not getting any anything extra or wastage. Um, so here, let's look at this score again. Um, and now let's change it to zero, zero. Again, barely, it's it's a, it's a no double, okay? So at four away, let's say at four away, three away. Now it's a double and now it's a pass. Because when you're at five away, you can take more aggressively than when you're at three away. And I think the same thing happens at three away, two away. It becomes a pass. What about a three-way, three-away? I think this is also too many gammons. Oh, no, this becomes a take. A three-way, three-away, you have to be cautious because a single win on a two-cube gets the opponent to the Crawford game, so that's valuable. Okay, uh, what if it's two-way and three-away? No, this is not, you're not going to want to do that. But what about three-away? Sorry, three away, four away. Now it's not even a double. Despite the fact that you're winning more gammons, you're just giving the opponent a lot of re cube vig. So uh, at being at four away, I can redouble and play for the match. So the way you can see how much uh, value you have of cube ownership is, is by looking at the cubeless equity. For doubling, it's 981 million points, and the cube full equity is 586. That's almost 400 milli points difference. That's a lot. That's about 10% uh, virtual winning chances. Um, okay, what about three away, five away? Same thing. Too much recube big. Okay. Okay. So then I had a 5 1 to play. This is the original position that's come in and come down. Double three was a good roll. Comes in and makes the five point on head with all three of them. 6 1 hits and continues. That one was clear. And then with the double three, don't be too hasty and just make the bar point. That's an error like this which results in this position. You can unstack the heavy six point and make a fourth interboard point like this, okay? Then the six three, the three was forced and then the one, uh, the six was played to the ace point. And then the two one, I just had to play up, try to start coming out. And the double three, nothing really good, one and then clear the six point. The five one, I had to come out and then unstack Double three comes around all the way. And then three two comes in and slots. Five four uh, comes out and makes the point. And then I had a double three. 
which was forced, and then double one was no good. There wasn't really much I could do here in this game. What was this, 3-2? Oh, I had to just run, just lose this too many gamins. It wasn't worth staying. So I just think about what are the roles that leave a shot. So 6-5 leaves a shot, 6-4 leaves a shot, 6-3 leaves a double shot, 6-2, six, 6-2 two, six, uh, six, two doesn't leave a shot, 6-1 um, doesn't leave a shot, 5-4 leaves a shot, 5-3 leaves a shot, 4-3 leaves a shot, leaves a double shot. And that, that's it. There are a lot of numbers that left the shot, but I don't have a board. I think maybe if I had a better board, it would be different. See, now, now I can stick around. Okay. It's just I'm not going to win even if I hit. All right. And that was that game. Then the third game, 4-3. Um, down in the score, you want to be aggressive here. 5-1. So this is a thematic play that a lot of people don't get. Um, when when you come in like that, unstacking is really nice, especially when these this is here. I, I believe if this checker were here, it's still probably right. Yeah, it's still right. And even at a tie score. Yeah, you see, it's it's almost right. See, in terms of the opening position, this is what I tell people. Your biggest liabilities are the back checkers. You want to get them moving. Same for your opponent, so you want to block your opponent. The secondary liabilities are the heavy stacks on the midpoint and the six point. The heavy stack on the six point is a bigger liability than the heavy stack on the midpoint. The reason for that is because you can play sixes from the midpoint, but you cannot play sixes from the six point. You can also not play fives from the uh, six point, at least in the starting position. And if uh, these checkers are moved uh, or one is moved, you can play the five, but then it goes deep. Ideally, you want these checkers, these extra three checkers to go to the five point and the four point. Whereas here, you have a little bit more flexibility. You can go with twos, threes, fours, fives. They're all good. Sixes is not great, but a six one can at least make that point. So uh, unstacking the heavy six point is a common thing to do early in the game. Uh, okay. Then the double four was a great roll. Comes in with both. Hits twice. Six two. I had to come out. The six one just anchors. And the double four. Okay. In like 13 five twice, making the five point. And that results in this position. That's actually a good position I didn't consider. And... Uh, the play I made resulted in this position. So this is the position I selected. And this is the one that's the top play. Uh, despite the fact that this only makes a two-point board, it makes the best two-point board without any gaps, and it leaves a robust position with spares here. Um, and it does leave this one shot, but that's not as important. This is the dice distribution after the top play, which is making the five point. This is how all of Blue's plays, Blue's rolls play, starting with double one, two, one, three, one, and so forth, um, as well as the average. And this is how the other play plays. So these are really bad. Afterwards, all the sevens become really good, a big difference, The um, as well as um, five, four. So four, three, five, two. Uh, the six one is not a huge difference, but four three and five two and five four. So you see, <clears throat> going back to here, after this, the four three, the five two, and the five four is much better. Not because it's a great roll here, but because it's a it's a terrible roll. After this, five four becomes really bad. Additionally, if you look at the second rolls. Look at this. This is how my second rows play after the top play versus the bottom of the second play that I selected. And they're much better. There's so many good numbers after this play. So you look at 4, 2, 5, 1, 4, 1, 2, 1. Look at how they play here. Um, 
four two makes this point. There's six one. There's five three. Then and then look at how they play after this one. Not a lot of good options. This is a strict position. It's called a brittle position with lack of builders. The double two, it looks like it didn't like stepping up. It likes just bring three down and playing safe. Looks like this. Okay, that does help contain and you kind of maintain this contact back here. Okay. Then there's the 5-3, which was just to run. The 5-1, come down and slot. Uh, okay. And then the 6-1 was just slotting the next points. 4-3, bring two down, 2-1. Two, so that was this was slightly better, the 4-3, which resulted in this position that provides two covering numbers there. Um, okay. And then the double two covers. What was the 4-3? Oh, this was the 4-3. Okay. So this one, I thought I went too fast. The best play was like this, the double falcon play, playing two off here. That does leave two blots, but it perfectly duplicates the uh, twos and threes that hit here to cover. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, after this, uh, let's see. It was, it was a small no double take. Uh, and then... Let's say I made the other play. The big no double, especially at this score. Yeah. So let's see this, this one. The other one loses more gammons, but it wins more games. Okay. Yeah, that's the duplication. You always have to think about that. All right. And then this was a double and a pass um, at this score. Is there anything I could have done to make it a take? So let's take a look. What if this were a little further back? Now it's a small, smaller pass. What if it's back here? Okay, that's huge. That's a huge difference. So see this triple gap? That's going to make it harder to come home. All right, it's my pleasure in this video to have a surprise visitor, my good friend Kit Woolsey. Thank you for joining me. How are you? Hi, Alex. Hi. All right. We were supposed to do a different one, but... Things got confused. I'm very happy to have you. We'll do that again in the future. Uh, Kent Woolsey is a legend of the game, Hall of Famer, written multiple books, uh, needs really no introduction. Very happy to have you. Um, I was going through this, so I'll continue with you. This was a match I played against XG. So I, I was just going through all of my errors. Let me just get this out. Oh, you didn't make so, any errors. I didn't make, no, I make a lot of errors, actually. So let me uh, oh, share this one. This is what I was looking at. Um, okay, so let me see. This this was the original position, okay? So yeah. um, I was down. This was a 3-0 to 5-point match. So 5 away, 3 away, blue doubled. So what I do is I paste it onto here. And some of the exercises that I do is try to see what would make it into a take. Um, so, like, let's say this were here and this were here. Same score. How much do you think this would affect it? Well, uh, well still not a take. Still not a take. I don't think so. But it's it's borderline. You see that? Yeah. Now, if that were still here and here, and now you do this, what do you think? I'm sorry, what what change did you make? I, I moved these two checkers to the oh, 10 point here, so now to, it's six away. Oh, we're back to the 10 point now. Uh, yeah, I take it now. Would you double? Oh, of course. Uh, let me see. Uh
The head three to nothing? No, I don't think so. It's close. Yeah. So. Yeah, you see what happens here is, uh, I don't know if you ever look at these numbers here, like the cube less equity is huge for doubles, 1.568, and the cube full equity is 0.723. The difference indicates the value of cube ownership, and that's huge here, right? I don't understand. I don't know what those numbers mean, how, how oh. you interpret those numbers, sorry. Oh, that's okay. So... It, it basically has has an idea like what the cube. So let's say we make it three three, two away two away. There's zero value of cube ownership, right? Well, yeah, yeah. But here there's a huge value. You have more recube vig at five away three away than at. I'm sorry, at five away two away than at two away two away. Obviously. Wait a minute. Who hold it? Who's doubling here? Blue is doubling. Blue is Blue. ahead two away five away. Who's ahead to away, five away? Yeah, so yeah, well, just, it's just at, the, at this score, uh, the taker has to be more cautious. What would you do for money here? Well, for money, it's an easy take. Yeah, it is, and probably not right to double. At this match score, it might be right to double. I don't know. Right, right. Uh, it's interesting. I feel like I learn a lot by adjusting the scores um, to see to see what it has. I, I actually, um, to be honest, I think I learned more about uh, doubling at different match scores from your book a long time ago than any other book. So I have to express my gratitude for that. All right. So this was the final game, I believe. Yeah, this was the Crawford game, five away, uh, four away Crawford. Uh, I'm sorry, five away, one away Crawford. The six five was just clear. And then, sorry, let me make these. Uh, so then I had a six four, it just ran the other checker. Five four made this point. Five four again, I brought two down. I don't think there was anything really huge here. With the three one, I made this point. I want to see if there's anything interesting here. No. Four, one. Just a nothing game. Yeah, this this was kind of a nothing game. I think I yeah, you made it really a nothing game with double threes. Yeah, yeah, and then so you just yeah so you just win unless something unexpected happens. Yeah, that was that was basically it. But there were like a few interesting positions that I was going through. Uh, that one was uh, what was the one I was looking at now? Oh yeah, that one. It was. Oh, here, this is a, let's, let's, let's do this. So like now it's five away, three away, and you have a double four to play is orange. Not a bad roll. Yeah. I made the two no, four points. I said, suppose I'd make my five point. Make the five point. Well, it looks like it's certainly the best structure and the midpoint is, doesn't have any. Right. Value. Yeah. Th this one. It is better. It provides a better structure, nice, robust position. Uh, I saw that this this position, it does make a third interboard point, but it's stripped. It's brittle. It gives good sevens that otherwise would not be good. So, yeah. It just looks right, it just looks right to play purely here. Yeah. And here in this position... I made a silly play. Um, I played 18 to 11 here, whereas I should have made the double falcon of playing two off the 18 point, which perfectly... Yeah, you don't, you don't really point. want to give them good sixes. Right, right. And that's that's what ended up happening. Um, so that was it. Uh, that was that match, but uh, hopefully we'll play, we'll play another match soon. I really appreciate that you, you joined me. Yeah, sorry, uh, sorry, I missed out earlier. I... We'll we'll do it again. We'll do it again. Hopefully next week, I'll I'll, I'll send you an email. Um, but do you have any comments on the few positions that you did notice here? I think nothing other than what I said. Okay. Um, so good. What what about um, going to any upcoming tournaments that you're excited about? 
I'm going to the Washington tournament in a couple of weeks. That one's always really good, the Cherry Blossom. I think that was started by Karen Davis, and I did an interview with uh, Ben Friesen about that. That's a fun one. Oh, yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, are you originally from the Washington, D.C. area? I am. Ah, okay. That's But now you live in the San Francisco Bay Area? Correct. Okay, okay. A lot, a lot of good players up there. Uh-huh. All right. Well, um, hopefully I'll see you. Maybe I, I can't travel much, but maybe at the upcoming Los Angeles tournament, that will be a lot of fun. Okay. All right. I'll see you soon again uh, in a different video, uh, and I'll go ahead and conclude this video. Thank you to the viewers for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe, and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below and what you'd like to see in future videos. I appreciate your super thanks. These small donations help me continue to create the high quality content that you enjoy. And now with membership, you can have exclusive access to the most popular videos like these. My book, Backgame and Backgame Strategies is available. There's a link in the description to where you can get it. And if you're interested in lessons, please contact me via email. My email address is in the description. I look forward to seeing everyone in future videos. And until then, Keep rolling your dice.